Hey, what is up everyone? It's Rich. All right, welcome to another installment of these number one issues. So this was a recommendation, Spawn Blood Feud number one. It's drawn by Tony S. Daniel and inked by Kevin Conrad. And it's written by Alan Moore. So I read this this morning. Um, I actually read um, the Alan Moore Youngblood yesterday. Also read Daredevil number one by Kevin Smith and Joe Quesada. So I'm stacking up a lot of... Um, a lot of content. I also um, shot a video for the Casada Daredevil already, and I'm going to read... There was one more Alan Moore number one issue. I can't remember what it was off the top of my head, but um, there was another recommendation that I had, and uh, I'm going to read that this morning. Then I'm also going to do um, the transition from Dave Cockrum to John Byrne on X-Men. So that's something that I made up on my own. Um, it's like... I, I, it's loosely based on sort of the premise of what we're doing now, which is the passing of the torch. Obviously, um, Dave Cockrum didn't start on the X-Men. I mean, he didn't start the X-Men, so it's not like um, the book launched with him and then John Byrne took over. But I thought that that would be an interesting transition, not only to see stylistically how it shifts, but you know, maybe even the, the tone of the book or whatever. We'll see how it goes. Um, all right, so anyway, Spawn Blood Feud number one. Uh, cover is excellent. Tony, um, I can't remember if he had done the 10th first. I'm going to kind of speculate and say that I believe that he had done the 10th before this, but I could be wrong. But this is from 1995. Um, I remember when these books are coming out. I definitely have all these comics. And I also have, um, uh, I don't know if there was like a zero or a half issue. There was something, like there was a special issue around this um, title too, I think. Um but yeah, they, they did a great job on the cover. I mean, I was so picky um, at this point with the McFarlane look because, you know, Todd would occasionally have people doing side books, um, Capullo being one, and uh, people started kind of sometimes working on the Spawn character. And it really, really had to have that McFarlane ink line on it, or it just never felt exactly right to me. These guys get super, super close. It's funny because this almost had little shades of um, what would become the Scotty Young style. But I, I'm not 100% sure when Scotty broke in. I don't, I don't think he was working in 1995, but I could be wrong on that. Um, it's possible that he broke in right around this time. I'm trying to think of what Scotty's first book would have been. He's great, though. But All right, so let's get into the comic. The story is really, really good. Um, the art is interesting. Alan Moore actually did thumbnails of, I don't know, the whole book, but in the back of the book, we're going to actually see hand-drawn thumbnails by Alan Moore, which at times, um, from what they say, um, uh, Tony stayed fairly true to. So Alan Moore not only is a badass writer, but um, he's a, a good artist. So Alan Moore's story. Tony Daniel and Kevin Conrad art. It's nice that they credit it as art, like that they did it together. But um, I mean, I would be under the impression that Tony did pretty much finish pencils and Kevin did the um, inks. But they did they did work together for a long time, so they may have had a more symbiotic relationship, which is a funny analogy because um, this story really deals with Spawn's suit quite a bit and um, like what is the entity that actually lives on his body. It's pretty interesting. So anyway, we start off with um, two characters. I guess this is a guy. I, it was a little hard to, to tell because of his fancy sandals. Maybe it's a girl. I guess it is a girl. Um, it's two two girls on um, a rooftop, and she's folding laundry. We've got this sound emanating. Wubba, wubba, wubba. <laughs> anyway, um, she's talking about being a vegetarian, and, or she's going to become a vegetarian. Her friend doubts it. Uh, she explains that she's learned about the food chain in her biology class and that there's a pecking order, and humans are meant to eat meat. And, um, in fact we get to eat without being and then they get eaten or killed we'll say but anyway we don't see what gets her but something takes her out and uh it's fast real fast in fact then it kills the other girl it was a little difficult to tell that this is a female i mean the hair is kind of long but it's not so long that it really looks like a girl but anyway this is the other girl that she was talking to but i i definitely was kind of like who is this character because it also, it, all of a sudden, it cuts to this hallway scene. So anyway, 
we've got a guy standing in a hallway and this thing busts through like a door. He reacts to it. Um, he sort of goes inside and shuts the door. Now, I've never been inside of like a building like this because it looks like they're outside. Like, I don't get the impression this is an outside hallway. Um, but he has like blinds on his front door window in the apartment. I've never seen that, but I guess it's possible that some places have something like that where you can peek out your little um, tenement window. Anyway, he's like, holy Christ, Harry, his wife says, who is it? Shut up and give me my gun. Now, this all happens within 30 seconds. You have to understand that from the time that we're on the rooftop and they get killed to what's going to happen on the next page, this all takes place in 30 seconds. So he basically, this is about all he gets out of his mouth is that, and they're done. Kills them all. Busts through the door. He's firing his gun really fast. He's already, like, literally coming apart at the seams as he's firing the gun. And then the um, wife and kid are killed. Kermit defrog gets it too she's got a frying pan they reacted fast limit, probably in my opinion they wouldn't have been able to pull all this together in 30 seconds unless she just had the gun inside the frying pan and they were all standing by the door but anyway <laughs> it's comics you gotta let it go right i'll never let it go no it's not. just kidding all right now we've got spawn he's in some sort of like hypnotic state He's unconscious, really, on Earth. If you saw him right now, that's what you would see. But the suit is speaking, and the, the suit has a feminine voice. It's very, I wouldn't call it very poetic, but there's a lot of sort of like what you would kind of picture Alan Moore to write. Like, it was interesting reading Youngblood before this, and I, I read Youngblood yesterday, to be clear, but um, it, it really didn't feel like an Alan Moore-type story. Usually he's a little more sort of um, flowery with his his text he uses bigger words than you might um sort of see in a standard comic and um with young blood he kept it pretty straight with this though he definitely gives the voice of the actual uh, we'll call it the symbiote symbiote whatever however you pronounce it um he gives it um more of a an intellectual sort of thought process and again it's it's seems to be coming from a feminine sort of thing but anyway it's talking about how the suit is alive and how different parts of the suit represent basically like an, a mouth turned inside out so that the suit is like teeth the suit is you know um sinew the the chains or skeleton it's really really interesting and now i don't know if todd had all of this stuff thought out is is intricately as alan puts it together i mean todd might have gone like the suit's alive um but alan really gives it a level of depth that that i think um if todd hadn't have thought of it that way was really quite a gift for him because it gives a lot of story um opportunities based on this perception but who knows maybe todd had all that i i haven't read the old spawns in a long time anyway um so he's on the hunt in some sort of you know whatever spawn world grabs this thing crushes it kills it um and probably feeds on it <clears throat> all right so now spawn wakes up he sort of is propelled back to reality and then of course all the homeless guys are like ow ow you okay what's going on man you freaking out dude but anyway, not only was he like having like we'll call it uh, like a nightmare, um, but the suit became very active when he was asleep and it was doing things that they hadn't seen before. So it's interesting, 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 interesting. The chains of yours was all over. We couldn't get near you. And I think the skulls were moving too. Um, and then Al's got like a real bad headache and he sort of wanders off. And this guy calls him a jerk. The jerk store called, and they're running out of you, Spawn. All right, Sam and Twitch. Some really funny dialogue between these two. It's their ninth anniversary of working together, and, um, yeah, they have some pretty funny little, like, things um, going on. Anyway, they're talking about the crime scene, and it's, uh, there's just meat and blood everywhere, and um, he's sick of all this, you know, Twilight Zone cla crap he refers it to. And anyway, um, <clears throat> so the department is bringing in a paranormal crimes specialist 
Um, his name is going to be Sandster, but he can't remember his name. Um, and uh, Twitch Twitch has some pretty funny like jokes that he does. Anyway, and they snap a photo of um, <laughs> he snaps a photo to remember their uh, anniversary. It's kind of funny. the The next page has got a funny joke too. Or I guess the one after next time they cut back to them. So Spawn starts talking to Suit. What are you? You? What are you? I know you're alive. I feel you creeping against my flesh. I know how your chains move, and I saw how you reacted in heaven. Um, and that's from some of the Angela, the Angela mini series. So I haven't read that in a long time, but I do have all those. Uh, is that what's causing my blackout? Some contra reaction to paradise, um, and. Uh, He's asking, like, you know, do you have a nervous system? Do you dream the skulls? I guess they could be warning markers, like the death head's moth, only three-dimensional. But the chains, what are they? Are they your limbs? Some sort of external skeleton? So he's really trying to figure out, like, what is this thing on his body? It's pr pretty pretty interesting. He refers to these as, like, the teeth on the outside. Um, so they're for defense and also eating... Um, and, uh, you know, where do you get your energy? And the energy could come from feeding, we might find out. Anyway, the hobos are spying on him. And uh, this guy looks in particularly suspicious. Super suspicious. All right, let's continue, friends. All right, so guess who shows up? Mr. Sankster, Sansker. There's all the press is there. They're very, very excited. The cops are like keeping everybody back. The reporters want to talk to him. This guy, cop, grabs the camera and crushes it or takes it out of her hand. They show up. He gets up to the podium. He's about to speak to press and I don't know. Maybe may, it may not even be press. This may just be actually the cops. And uh, this is a really good like little scene with him so he talks about how these super villains um or or some of them are actually um vampires uh he says um you know you you think of them in different terms the young bloods the super freaks whatever personally i prefer older labels and he says world dalak nosferatu vampire i like you to all take a look at this first slide so he starts to break down um why his theory that that these superheroes are more like vampires uh he talks about you know the that bats show up when spawns around um uh, he is nocturnal although he has been seen in daylight he has to protect himself uh, in daylight says so all like like again looking at all these number one issues it was funny too as someone said it's hard to recommend number one issues i i was i didn't want to be um con contradictory to his perception of asking for number one issues but if ever there was a time that you wrote a good comic your number one issue would be it it shouldn't be a hard question or hard to recommend comic books that have good first issues honestly and again it's not in reference to your your take on it but there should be a lot of great first comic book issues that establish some of the characters in the story establish the initial premise that the book is going to get into um you know start to you know create like a web of things that are going on and then there should be some sort of a cliffhanger or some sort of resolution by the end of the first issue of something so i, I mean it would be like saying that like it's hard to think of a good opening scene from a movie because that's kind of what the first comic is is it's it's like you know, it's not exactly like a first scene of a movie, but I mean, you, you there there should be a lot of examples of great first uh, issues. I I think, if not comics, is failing its own self. All right. So anyway, um, the costume is blood red. Um, I've often found such creatures uh, favor these motifs. I thought that was a nice little thing. It's like supernatural gang colors. Um, and then um, <laughs> Twitch goes, he does jokes too, sir. And Sam, I I think he's Sam. He's like, shut up. Maybe he's Sam and he's Twitch. I can't remember. I never really read the Sam and Twitch comic, although I, I like Ashley Wood's art. Yeah, I never, I never had time to read it. I do have a bunch of them. All right, so anyway, um, and then also this was interesting too, and I'm surprised that he didn't um, uh, say whose grave he was hanging out at, but he goes, okay, now this shot was taken at a graveyard that the creature seems obsessed with. I have reason to believe this is where his mortal body was buried, but the fact that it's Al Simmons, and Al Simmons is such a respected 
military guy and was so famous, the fact that he didn't mention it, I found very odd. I, I think that, that um, I understand why he held back that information, meaning Alan, not not Mr. Sang Sang Sangster. But um, yeah, it's a little weird because I, I, I think that... He, that's a pretty important piece of information. But anyway, um, I'm going to take a long look at this rare shot of the thing without its mask. Look at, at the decay. Look at the putrefaction. And anyway, so he says, this is how we need to handle it. And this is a great drawing by Tony. I actually really like this. I think it's a very, very cool shot. Very dynamic. Um, he says, look, the way that we're going to handle this is this. We'll get to the next page and we can actually look at while he's talking about it you have to shine the light on them literally figuratively and and do these things that they don't like these beings don't like light in any sense that includes light of close scrutiny to that end we'll need ground and air surveillance teams they also avoid the light of publicity so i suggest a full public information campaign including tv spots leaflets posters you name it um they call them extra normal hazards instead of vampires um and obviously we want to avoid panic so our releases have to be carefully worded so they're switching it instead of vampire to that sooner or later our campaign will pro provoke the effect uh, we desire by driving things out into the open where we can get at them sooner or later we'll attract the attention of the creature itself pretty interesting i mean this is this is like a very very heavy duty spawn issue with a lot of a lot of stuff being set up and some very very cool ideas but of course it's alan moore um he's a great writer so spawn gets a win you know whiff of this he sees the flyers and he's freaking out already what are they saying that i'm some sort of monster some sort of vampire um and his perception of this is that he's been trying to save the human race um from everything that boils from the gutters and um this is how they're gonna thank me with a stake through my heart and you can see the suit is actually kind of coming unraveled as he's doing this so this this stress or you know attention is already starting to affect the suit uh then we cut to i guess does he collapse the suit starts to speak again. Okay, yeah, so when the suit speaks, he does. He passes out. But it says, I'm K7 Letha, daughter of the seventh house of K. Um, uh, somewhere beneath me are the prey. I taste their far far anxiety, sigh and shiver and steel links. Um, the perfume of their nervousness excites me, and the rumor of their blood um, is in me like a fire. some crazy shit alan's a good choice to write spawn to be honest he's he's got um some depth to it anyway so wubba 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 we start to have that sound again we've got some criminals in this um kind of a like it's probably like a tenement or something like that there's a lot of stuff going on in this apartment you're gonna see in a second but um uh Anyway, these these people have got money from crimes or drugs, whatever they're doing, but they're they're gonna maybe split up some cash. Anyway, this thing bursts in and uh, it's on like Donkey Kong. It just immediately starts killing all of them. I was a little tiny bit confused about who this is. So we've got a guy with a hat, we've got a bald guy, and we've got the girl. Okay. I don't know who this character is but he wants the money but you we see this guy gets killed these two run out i'm assuming it's the guy with the hat but his body doesn't match the size of this but then what what happens on the next page is you see the guy with the hat again with the hat still on or the hat comes off but i don't i don't really know who the big guy was so it was like a little confusing he should have maybe been established in the other panel anyway he get the person with the hat gets killed the money's flying everywhere they start running out the door uh or the these two are in the elevator and they're kind of holding the door open for this guy who's running towards the door um he's got a gun but it's too late this thing kills him the um elevator door is shut so we had elevator oh i think the elevator was in oh no the elevator was in uh Oh, the Daredevil book that I read yesterday. We haven't done the video of that yet. All right. So they're going down. Of course, the thing jumps to on the top of the elevator and kills them both. Um, 
pretty much in seconds. The elevator doors are still shut. So it gets down to the bottom floor. This is, I guess, a shot from inside. As it opens, there's a guy with, I kind of think, maybe like a prostitute. Um, they're about to get into it. Although she does know his name, so maybe it's not. Maybe it's people just entering the apartment. But based on what I'm seeing, I think this is not like the best apartment. Because here we've got more people with kind of... I don't know, maybe there's just like a lot of criminal activity. But then anyway, we've got a guy in a suit, another guy in a suit... Um, forget the cops, man, just get out of here. I'm trying, but I don't think I will. And then uh, what inferred it to me was the fact that she said, Sonny, Sonny, you said this place was safe. So I don't know why you would tell someone that an apartment is safe unless you were going there to do something illegal. Anyway, they're all killed. Wubba, wubba, wubba. <laughs> What's funny, when I saw the thumbnails of the book, I was like, what is going on with all the weird, like, lettering on a bunch of the pages anyway so we cut to spawn in some weird world i can't i don't really remember what this world is called probably has a name some some sort anyway so i think this is spawn and maybe this is like um other symbiotes i'm not really 100 percent sure but anyway it talks about when the suit's fed that the redness of the suit changes becomes a deeper more satisfied red um, again, from the feminine point of view, I, I feel, um, and very kind of more um, lyrical with the like writing style, um, some weird stuff talking about like killing and feeding. And these are all the bodies of their victims that they, they're headless. They just clump them up there. There's references to leaves and, um, uh, like blowing in the wind and stuff like that. Anyway. The sky fills my sails, and my knuckle fangs rake at the veins of the wind. I rise up with the slaughter him swelling my folds. I rise up and ex ex exultant a hell flag into the god gaze of the suns, whose gaze brings life, whose gaze brings revelation. Careful, he's starting to come around, so it cuts back to spawn in the alley probably sorry my cats were making noise and anyway it's the cops actually and the cops have got spawn they're gonna arrest him and that's the cliffhanger for this so oh and and actually there's a dead person right underneath him wow okay shit he's in big trouble okay i didn't even i didn't see the body i was kind of you know so it's all the people that got killed in that apartment interesting i think that's a great first issue there's a lot that goes on there's a lot that's established a little you know some some weirdness but nothing that that um i mean like i i think the mystery of the suit and sort of the language not language that it's speaking but a lot of the stuff that it's saying feel like puzzle pieces that that will tie into other themes and stuff that alan's sort of gonna unveil but i liked it i thought it was really really good i thought the art was very nice Inks were good, colors were good, good story, and good characters, you know. All right, so let's look at the back of the book. So we got fan art. I always love to look at old fan art for one reason in particular, is I like to look at the names and see if anybody that um, got their name in it is actually around now. The only name that looks slightly familiar to me is Nick Paradis. All the rest I'm not familiar with. So it's possible. We'll look at number nine in, in particular and see if it looks like someone. Now, maybe a couple of these people did actually end up doing comic work, but um, a couple of the drawings were nice. So nine, let's see, nine. Yeah. It's not bad. Shadowhawk and Spawn. This is nice. Kind of a Bill Sienkiewicz sort of vibe. This is good. This looks kind of referenced from Todd, but it's a nice drawing. This is cool. This guy almost did like a page. And then we got an Angela. All right. All right. Todd always has letter column. If you want to pause this and read the letter column, you can. It's a lot to go over. I didn't read it this time. But I used to I used to read them when I would get the any of McFarlane's books. I always enjoyed this. Lots of young fans, 13 years old. 25 is not super young, but there's two 13-year-olds, or fan 13. I don't know if that means a plain old 13-year-old boy. 
as opposed to the ones that have superpowers. All right, so Alan Moore behind the scenes. So these are some of Alan Moore's thumbnails. They're nice. Not bad, not bad. And then a few more. So that is Spawn, Blood Feud, number one. Written by Alan Moore. Art by Tony Daniel and Kevin Conrad. And um, I liked it. I really liked it. It's one of the better superhero stories that I've read so far. I, I, where Where... I think there's enough intrigue to really make me kind of want to read a little bit more. Some of the some of the number one issues have been good, but I'm not like completely like hooked where I'm like, oh my god. But it, that that's so subjective, and any person that reads a comic book story is going to have a very very different experience with what gets them excited. It could be based on characters, your favorite creators, whatever it is. I'm a little more like a doctor where it's like I just kind of look at the information and um, try to make an assessment based on it I'm, i don't really have like um i don't have an agenda with these so i'm just checking them out and like whatever sort of strikes my fancy but it changes you know sometimes i'll be into like really dark stuff but like right now i'm not for whatever reason i'm kind of like not into the dark stuff as much so although this story was dark um something fun would be a nice change of pace. So I, I ping pong back and forth at times. But all right, you guys have a great day. I'm going to read me some Dave Cockrum and John Byrne here right now and get that kind of going. And then um, I'll see you tomorrow with more video. Make sure you smash the like. It's important. I'll talk to you later. Bye.